Oftentimes, whenever people are told a game is pay to win, they lose some respect for said game. For those who don't know, a game or aspect of a game being pay to win essentially means that players can spend real money to receive an exclusive advantage not normally obtainable, and in the case of Roblox, it would be spending Robux to receive that advantage. If a game is pay to win, that means it isn't fair for everyone, as people can very easily pay their way to victory. This led me, as well as others, to believe for a while that pay to win games were all bad to a certain degree due to this nature. However, would you believe me if I said there's such a thing as good pay to win? A type of version of this plague which is decently balanced and to a certain degree actually helps enhance the atmosphere of the game it's present in. Well, this good pay to win does actually exist, and better yet, it can be found in two of the most well-developed games on Roblox, those being Doors and Pressure. In this video, I'll be explaining how both Doors and Pressure perfectly encapsulate the concept of pay to win, to strangely enough benefit the experience of their games. So with all of that being said, let's begin. Alrighty, so I know it seems very bizarre to hear about a type of pay-to-win that is actually beneficial, but just hear me out on this. Now, to understand how Doors and Pressure use this to their advantage, we have to understand how both the games work. Doors and Pressure are both survival horror games with a very similar gameplay loop. Essentially, the player has to traverse through a building whilst avoiding monsters and threats along the way, and every so often they can encounter a milestone such as a restock shop or a boss fight. Both of these games are extremely well done, and I highly recommend you check them out both if you haven't already. Anyways, both Doors and Pressure, as I have stated, have monsters and threats you have to avoid, and if you do die to these hazards within the games, you have the option to pay to revive yourself. These revives are the only pay to win aspect of both of these games, and they are handled perfectly for each. Let's start with how Doors manages to make its revives work. Now, as soon as you die in this game, right off the bat you'll notice how reviving costs Robux. In fact, the only renewable way to obtain revives indoors is by paying Robux. This is where the pay to win aspect of this feature comes into play. However, notice my wording in that phrase. Although revives can easily be obtained through paying Robux for them, they can actually be obtained for free too. You see, if you redeemed certain codes during the time they were available, or obtained certain badges, you could have been able to obtain 14 revives completely for free, which is way more than what would even be required in a normal playthrough of the game. However, although revives could have been obtained for free, the amount you can get for no cost is limited. And this sense of scarcity when it comes to having free revives actually works extremely well for the overall gameplay of Doors. You see, the whole point of Doors is to be a trial and error game. The developers even said this in the game's description. You are meant to learn from every mistake, meaning each time you die, you can solve a little more of the puzzle and progress a little further. Having the ability to cheat death just kind of throws this whole concept out the window. As with that, there are no more consequences to learn and grow from. In fact, reviving was so out of line with the overall concept of the game that it was originally never planned to be added. So, this is why I think that revives and doors, despite technically being pay to win, actually benefit the game. Having so many be completely free allows those without Robux to still use them comfortably throughout their entire playthrough. However, the sense of scarcity they have makes people think twice about using them, which encourages players to actually try any challenge they face again instead of just cheating death and skipping their potential growth they could have had. Not to mention, reviving indoors is prohibited altogether in the most difficult parts of the game, such as the greenhouse or the rooms, meaning even on top of everything I just said, they can only be utilized in the areas where they are the least effective. And this further enhances the point I made just a moment ago, as players are physically not allowed to cheat in the areas where it would be the most detrimental to the main point of the game. Now, as you had probably heard me say, Doors isn't the only game which uses pay-to-win elements to benefit itself, but Pressure does too. Similarly to Doors, this game's only pay-to-win feature is revives, which are referred to as ferryman tokens in-game. Now, unlike revives and Doors, ferryman tokens aren't locked behind Robux, to a certain degree. You see, indoors, you are only allowed to revive once per run, and this revival can either be paid for with Robux or be obtained for free through one of the methods listed before. In Pressure, however, you can revive twice in a single run. The first token can be obtained by purchasing it with the in-game currency, and the second token can exclusively only be purchased with Robux. 
Now, as you are probably aware, Pressure has a very similar gameplay loop as Doors, and judging by how Doors at its core was designed to be a trial and error game, so was Pressure to a certain extent. However, contrary to what I had described moments ago with Doors, having revives and Pressure easily obtainable through purchasing them with the in-game currency, although ruining that sense of scarcity for a bit, actually works better with the game. You see, pressure is undoubtedly more challenging than doors, and it is also a lot more unpredictable. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but what it does mean is that reviving would have to be changed in order to fit in this new setting, and pressure handles their ferryman tokens very well. Having one token be purchasable with the in-game currency removes much of the pay-to-win aspect of reviving altogether, and it allows players to easily gain another chance in the very chaotic setting of the game. However, having a second token, even as a more costly option, allows players to still learn from their mistakes if they don't have Robux, which is the main point of any game like this. Additionally, the second token adds back that sense of scarcity which works really well with doors, as now players would actually have to be extra careful in order to not die without paying, which is a nice touch. Overall, I'd say that having the ability to revive twice in pressure suits the chaotic nature of the game very well, especially with the first token costing in-game currency and the second one costing Robux. So, in conclusion, not everyone is going to like pay to win elements in a game, and oftentimes they are executed in ways which aren't fair. However, with Doors and Pressure, their sole pay to win elements are developed to perfectly fit the situations they are present in, which I find to be extremely cool as I had never seen such a hated feature being turned into a beneficial one. Anyways, that was everything I wanted to say in this video. Let me know your opinions in the comments, and with all of that being said, thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed.